Hello, I'm Becca and I lead the church here at Arran with an incredible team. 300 to 400 of us normally meet at the Little Hampton Academy to worship God and spend time learning together. We are passionate about the Arran area and run a community centre, two early education settings and a cafe. We miss meeting together right now, but we can still meet together, even if that's at home. For now, we are going to continue being together in our own homes, connecting with each other in any way that we can, including these weekly videos. We will keep praying together, including two live streams every month, one here on YouTube and one on our Facebook Connect group. And of course, we will also continue supporting our local community and our partners overseas. We will give help where needed, including financial. So please join with us, get involved, find out more at aaronchurch.com. That's aaronchurch.com. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Aaron Church Online. I'm Gareth, and we've got a fantastic morning of all sorts of wonderful stuff coming up, haven't we, Becca? We have. So we are going to be worshipping together, singing together. Uh, we have got a time for fun, which is going to be really good fun. Uh, then we have got a community check-in, and we have got a brilliant talk with Pippa. So it's going to be really good. So we're continuing our series on a time for change and looking at Ecclesiastes 3 again. And today we're looking at cry or dance. And I don't know about you, Becca, I am a terrible dancer, but I'm a brilliant crier. I love a good cry. It just seems to kind of really release a lot of um, emotion for me in a safe space, of course, um, with people that love me around me. Um, not that hopefully they don't think I'm a big baby or anything, but I think it just kind of puts you in a bit of a vulnerable place sometimes, which is sometimes a good place to be in. Mm. I mean, it's, it's brilliant to be able to cry, isn't it? It's a great thing. And also to be able to dance, both of them really are kind of very freeing things mm. to do aren't they when you dance like like there's nobody watching it's yeah. ama amazing and if you ask lauren she would rather no one watch when i was dancing i can assure you <laughs> well whatever you want to do this morning cry or dance we are gonna worship god together morning everybody Welcome to church. We're going to worship together this morning. We're looking at uh, dancing and we're looking at crying and grieving. Henry Nguyen says this, We tend to stay away from mourning and dancing, 
too afraid to cry, too shy to dance. We become narrow-minded complainers, avoiding pain and also true human joy. While we live in a world subject to the evil one, we belong to God. Let us mourn and let us dance. It takes freedom to mourn and it takes freedom to dance. And right now we're gonna worship God with freedom and you feel free to mourn and you feel free to dance as we worship God together. We welcome you, God, into this place. We pray that you will be in our mourning and in our dancing. And I pray that there will be freedom to do both today. Amen.
Through the years you've always been there We're singing praise Is your love Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you would never fail me yet Waiting for change to come You promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. And you never will. Still stands, great is your faith. 
So we're going to spend some time now and take communion and remember the love that Jesus had for us. Such a love that he died on the cross for us so that we could be free, so that we could have life. And there is no other love like it on this earth. And so we want to take time and remember the amazing thing that Jesus did for us. I'm going to read from Corinthians. It says this. When we drink the cup of blessing, aren't we taking into ourselves the blood, the very life of Christ? And isn't it the same with a loaf of bread we break and eat? Don't we take into ourselves the body, the very life of Christ? Because there is one loaf, our manyness becomes oneness. Christ doesn't become fragmented in us, rather we become united with him. We don't reduce Christ to what we are. He raises us up to who he is. What amazing words that when we take uh, the bread and the wine, he raises us up to who he is. We're going to remember that today as we take bread and wine. So Father God, we thank you for this bread. We thank you that your body was broken for us so that we could have life and life to the full. Thank you, God, for what you did for us that day. And thank you, Jesus, for your blood that was poured out for us so that we could be unified, so that we could be together 
as we drink this, this wine and as we uh, eat bread together, may we know that we are one together today. Amen. I just encourage you to uh, take the bread and wine right now in your homes and remember that we're together today, remembering Jesus. Good morning, everybody. This is the time for fun section of online church now. And because part of the theme this morning is dance, we have got a special little dance video for you, which features some of the young people and the children from Aaron Church who enjoy dancing. And to help you join along, if you want to, I'm gonna teach you a couple of the really simple moves that they do in this video. So if you want to join in, then stand up, and have a go at these moves. And don't worry if you get it wrong. So the first one goes like this. You cross your arms over your shoulders, then open it up, and then you shake it off to one side. And then you just repeat and do it on the other side. So cross and open and shake it off. And it's gonna go a bit faster than that with the music. So let's have a go. It goes one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. And then the next move, um, the words are champion each other. So to be a champion, you're gonna go like this, and you're just gonna do four jumps to the side. Two, three, four. And the next words are build up one another. So you're gonna march and you're gonna build up. One, two, three, four. So you can do some of those moves with the very talented dancers from Aaron Church. Um, and I hope you enjoy this little dance video. Here we go. And remember Love one another Your sisters and your brothers Your friends and your enemies Champion each other Build up one another Positivity is the key So be patient, be careful A joyful life Let your love be the shining light Champion each other Build up one another They do well! A big round of applause to all the children and young people who did those videos and everybody who joined in at home. Enjoy the rest of church! Hello everybody, welcome to our community check-in bit of our time together. So today we are up at the brew house and really excited because we have got Dave from Beach Town Blooms um, he set up a new business and we are really excited to hear about uh, how he's done that and how we can support him. So Dave, just tell us a bit about who you are. So I'm Dave, I'm from Beach Town Blooms. Um, I grew up in Little Hampton. Um, I've been here all my life pretty much. It's a wonderful place. Um, it is. And yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. It's got its quirks, but yeah. wheel. And yeah, so I, I've basically I worked in retail for like 12 years at the body shop in um, in-store design and last September, about a year ago, um, I left there and decided to become a florist, which was a bit left field, but um, That's amazing, yeah. how did you do, how did you become a florist then? So I, it's a funny story, but we had to put in a load of fake nature into one of the stores in, uh, in Stockholm, and when I was doing it, I thought I could do a much better job if we used the real stuff. So I went on a night course, and then uh, just basically fell in love with it, and then did another um, small like floristry business course with a lady in Yapton and um, yeah just went from there really and then I did a few pop-up shops did one in Feltham when Storm Kira was hitting and that was an absolute white well it was just a nightmare um, I spent about 800 quid on flowers I did my wholesale order all wrong and took about 15 quid <laughs> um, and then I did a couple more pop-up shops in March and then one of them was the day before Mother's Day and again that was like when all the pubs and that were shut in so that was another nightmare but cracked on during lockdown and um, started doing my letterbox flowers um, and it just went from there really and then Sam and Stuart from the brew house asked if I'd like to stay here permanently and it's been uh, yeah brilliant ever since really. That's brilliant and then what is your best story that's come out of you starting your business? <laughs> um, one morning I was sitting well I was in my uh, partner's we were, we were doing it all out of a two-bedroom flat in Hove and uh, I got a phone call from this lady who had 
seen me on the BBC News because I'd partnered up with a guy called Ben in um, Wolberton who grows all the Alstrom area and we had, he had managed to get himself on the news because they wanted to know how he was going to cope in um, with, uh, they first wanted to know about Brexit and then they did coronavirus and this lady saw us on the news, she rang me up and was like oh do you mind sending some flowers to my poorly mate uh, his name's Boris and they've got to go to an estate, it's, it's called Checkers. I thought it was a complete wind up. Um, so yeah, it turned out it was Boris Johnson. So I sent him the flowers then when he was ill and then literally the next week got another phone call from a different friend of Boris's and he was like, do you mind sending them to uh, his partner Carrie who's just had a baby? Um, so yeah, I sent them to Checkers and Downing Street within like a week. That's a, that's <laughs> a brilliant story, isn't it? It was nuts. And what about, you know, um, you've done something completely new and there's mm. lots of people right now losing their jobs, not knowing exactly what's going to happen in their future. What advice would you give to somebody who's just about to do something courageous, maybe set out mm. to do something new? So, well, I, well I, 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 I lost my job at the body shop, so I was basically had nothing else really to do. I'd been there for 12 years. Um, I had a, a mate of mine ran a garden centre up in Pulborough, so I just went up there to help them set up Christmas. And I was only meant to be there for like a month. So it gave me a bit of time just to think about what exactly I wanted to do. Um, and I just, yeah, went for it really. You got, can't really be fearful with these things. It's, yeah. it, is, it is pretty scary, but yeah. you just got to go with it and yeah. just believe that you know it will happen as yeah. long as you find it like fun have a massive yeah. amount of passion for it yeah. then it'll work like yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so, brilliant yeah don't have any fear yeah go and do go it go for it yeah yeah go and do yeah, it yeah yeah how could we if there was one thing that we could pray for you what would it be um send more flowers to boris no <laughs> um probably just more like it, the uncertainty of the future really and with more lockdowns coming christmas is approaching um, just yeah the business I guess like just make yeah. sure everything's cool with the business but yeah. yeah brilliant well we will keep praying for Dave won't we and uh, if you want to meet him come up here to the yeah. brew house come and see his flowers but thank you so much Dave no, we're right you. behind you thanks a lot cheers thank you Hi, my name is Pippa and I'm going to be moving us in to the next part of our series looking at the book of Ecclesiastes. Right now we are looking at chapter 3 and specifically verse 4. So chapter 3 starts with this line that says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Then verse 4 says, A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. And what strikes me about this passage is the way that it gives validation and recognition of all different emotions that we as humans go through. And the author lays it out in a poem that lists one emotion or activity and then follows it with the opposite. So we've looked at being born and dying, planting and uprooting, tearing down and building. And I think that this pairing of opposites is a key thing to notice with weeping and laughing and mourning and dancing. I'm going to focus on the bit that says there's a time to mourn and a time to dance. I was intrigued by the way that dancing is listed as the opposite of mourning and it made me question what do I think is the opposite of mourning and I probably wouldn't have chosen dancing but thankfully I am not a biblical author and I like this pairing of mourning and dancing and as I thought about it more I realized just how wise and true this is because anyone who has mourned or grieved is another way of saying it knows that mourning is a full body activity when you mourn you feel it everywhere you are physically overcome with sadness it clouds your thoughts it makes you double up because you feel it so intensely it distorts your appetite it exhausts your entire body and dancing is the same but the opposite it's a full body activity. It's the most effective exercise for working every part of you, even the bones in your body. I've danced professionally and for fun, and I can tell you there aren't as many activities that are as all consuming as dancing. Dancing connects your limbs, your core, your hands, your feet and your brain. It involves your entire body. So in the way that mourning is a physical and mental all-consuming expression of pain, dancing can be a physical and mental all-consuming expression of joy. And in life, there's time for both of them. When we are thinking about what life is and how we can live it well, I think we have to look at Jesus. And Jesus did both of these things. He mourned and he danced. In the book of John, chapter 11, Jesus mourns his friend Lazarus, who has just died. 
What's fascinating about this is that Jesus goes to the tomb where Lazarus' dead body is with the intention of raising him back to life. He tells his disciples on the way that that's what he's going to do. But when he gets there, he sees his friend Mary, who is Lazarus' sister, and she's weeping and mourning with all the other people there. And the Bible says that Jesus was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled, and he wept with them. He put his glorious action plan to bring Lazarus back to life on hold to mourn his death, to recognise the pain that death brings. He mourned with them. He didn't rush in and fix it. I have a three-year-old son, and if he's crying because he's got his finger stuck in a transformer, I don't stop and say, yeah, it really hurts. I fix it. I take that thing off his finger and I throw it across the room. But Jesus, in the most extreme example of having the power to fix what was causing pain, doesn't do that. He stops. He cries with his friend and he waits and he grieves with them. And then he resumes his action plan and brings Lazarus back to life, showing his power over death. And I think that that's the most beautiful insight into the way that Jesus understands and meets us in our pain. He shows us that it's okay to cry when we're really sad and that losing someone hurts in a way like nothing else does and we need to physically express that. There's a time to mourn. If you're mourning, know that Jesus mourns with you. Whether you're mourning the loss of a person, a dream, an opportunity, a way of life, he doesn't rush you through your pain or even deny it or fix it straight away. He doesn't want you to skip that emotional experience, but he does want to meet you and help you through it. Rick Warren, who's a famous American pastor, lost his son. His son committed suicide. And Rick Warren speaks really amazingly about mourning and grief. And he encourages people to face it. He says that grief is God's gift. It's the tool that God gives us to get through the transitions of life. And I think Jesus showed us this, the importance of giving time to grief, even though he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. In my early 20s, I was in a girl band and um, the purpose of this girl band was to use the music and dancing as a way into schools and to get to know the young people and talk to them about God. And in every class that we took, we would have a question time at the end where we would stand in a line in the front of the classroom and the students could ask us any question they liked, which was terrifying. And sometimes they would ask silly questions like, why aren't you on X Factor? Or can I have your number? But one of the main questions that would be asked pretty much every time would be why does God let bad things happen? It's a huge question with so many answers but often my friend Jess who was in the band with me would answer it with her own story. Jess's dad died suddenly on his way to work when Jess was just 15 and Jess would talk about this experience how hard it was for her and her family but she would also say I've learned that God isn't a way out of painful situations but he is a way through it and again I think Jesus showed us this he showed us that he is deeply moved by our pain and grief the overwhelming darkness and despair that we feel isn't something separate from God that he doesn't understand or identify with it even isn't even something that he will instantly rescue you from but he is with you in it you can invite him into your suffering and he will meet you there and help you move through it He knows more than anyone who ever lived what it is to suffer. He experienced that firsthand on the cross. And in doing that, he made a place for us to send our suffering. In my life so far, I've mourned for people and I've mourned for dreams. And when I'm mourning, one of the things I say is, I send this pain to the cross. Because on the cross, Jesus took it to death. It died with him. And Jesus rose again into a new life where death is not the end and everything is made new. And that hope and that reality is what gives us the strength and courage to walk through mourning and into life. And life isn't just full of mourning, it's full of joy too, it's full of dancing. There are few things in life more joyful and ridiculous and exhilarating as dancing. At weddings or parties or just watching someone who's really good at it, dancing is all about freedom. There's something really special about it. It's an opportunity to shake off inhibitions and let go. And we do it from a really young age, it's an instinct. And I think the main thing that stops us doing that as we get older is a fear of being judged or looking silly. But how much more fun do we have when we forget that and just join in? There's a guy from my husband Christian's hometown who is renowned for his dancing at parties and weddings. In normal life, he's like this older, shy, introverted man. But when the music starts, he transforms into a disco diva legend who is having the best time. And his freedom frees up the people around him to do the same. We should all be a bit more like that guy and allow ourselves to express joy and be free and fun in it. The Bible doesn't talk specifically about Jesus dancing at parties, but there is this moment where he's so overcome with joy that he jumps and leaps around. 
It's in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 17 to 21. Jesus has sent out a big group of people into the towns ahead of him to heal the sick and tell the people that the kingdom of God is near to them. And this group comes back to Jesus so excited because when they've prayed for people in his name, miracles have happened. And they say, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus says, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And then it says that at that, Jesus rejoiced exuberant in the Holy Spirit. And that word rejoice that describes what Jesus did in the original Greek literally means to jump and leap for joy. Jesus was so excited to tell these people that their names were written in heaven, that they mattered, that they were loved, and that there's an eternal kingdom that they're part of that he cannot contain himself. He has to express his joy by leaping and jumping about. If we fully understood the depth of God's love for us and the truth that our names are written in heaven, I have no doubt that we would leap and jump for joy. Your name is written in heaven. You matter, you are known, and you're part of his family and a part of a kingdom where there is no mourning and lots of dancing. It's interesting to me that these examples of Jesus mourning and dancing as emotional opposite experiences are directly as a result of death and life. When Jesus mourns, it's because of death, the loss of life and the separation and the pain that it brings. And when Jesus dances, it's because of life, the reality that there is an eternal life where there is no separation. Your name is on the register of heaven. If you're mourning right now, or if there's something you need to mourn, but you've been blocking that out, know that there is a time to mourn and Jesus meets you in that and he mourns with you and moves you through it. And there is hope. Jesus defeated all death on the cross. He's your savior and your healer and your name is written in heaven. When the Bible pairs uh, mourning and dancing together again, it's in Psalm 30 where it says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. I want to encourage you to stir up the joy inside of you and begin to express that physically like Jesus did. Read those verses in Luke 10. Let that gratitude and wonder grow in you until it overflows. If you like dancing, that's great, do it. If you don't, just move. It might be as simple as lifting your arms up as you pray to God or praise him. It really doesn't matter how you do it, but there's something so uplifting and powerful when our body joins our minds and our hearts in praise. So just be free in it. If you mourn or dance today, or do a bit of both, know that God is with you, that he loves you, and that this church community that you are a part of is here to support you and encourage you through it all.
So we want to look to God right now. And uh, you may feel completely overwhelmed by your situation or by what's going on in the world. But I pray right now you will be overwhelmed by the love of God, be overwhelmed by the peace of God. And whether you are grieving or whether you're dancing, whether you're celebrating or whether you are so sad, we pray that you know God with you right now. You might be grieving and sad. I pray that you will know God is with you. He's with you in the sadness. He's with you in your grieving. And I pray that you would know that God is with you when you're dancing and celebrating. For some of you, you need to laugh again. You need to laugh and be joyful in some of the things that are going on around you. Take joy in those things. And so I pray for you right now. We pray, God, that for those people who are grieving and for those people who are celebrating, that you, God, would be close. Pray, God, that you would be with us in our joy and be with us in our sadness. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And whether you are grieving or whether you are celebrating, we pray that you will know God with you this week. And while you're on your YouTube channel here, why don't you click subscribe to our channel just below. And if you want to find out more about Aaron Church, please go to aaronchurch.com forward slash connect and we'll keep you up to date with absolutely everything going on in the life of the church. So have a great week and we'll see you next week. The vision of the church has not changed. We passionately want to see the good news of Jesus change lives, communities and the world. Our Sunday gatherings have always been marked with the presence of God and we love to pursue Him through worship. 27 years ago, the Cutting Edge events launched a movement of young people praising God and then Delirious took it around the world. Over the past 10 years, Big Church Day Out has been a national expression of our desire to celebrate our Creator through music. And now we are seeing songs of hope come out of our church. My highlight this year, well, it's always a highlight seeing the, um, the church worshiping together and gathering together. And the way we create space at Aaron for that is, is always wonderful to see. So it's always a highlight. But also we got to travel a little bit this year with the Kings Village team and we got invited to the 24-7 uh, Global Conference which was in Vienna. A very different expression to ours at home but it was brilliant um, and a real privilege to take a little bit of our expression from Aaron out to what they were doing out there and, and be a part of that. So this year a big highlight for me has been Big Church Day Out. So a few of us from the worship team were given the opportunity as Kings Village to play for some amazing artists, Pat Barrett and Ellie Lyme Bear, worshiping with thousands of people. It was just such a special moment. I think that the unique thing about Aaron is its ability to create. So we're not just singing songs that everybody else has sung, but what we are doing is creating music. I would love to see our songs are our style of worship impacting the world um, and touching lives and, and seeing 
people come to, to know God our Father through, through songs, through lyrics, through melodies. The worship at Aaron is really special because there is a lot of freedom for people to just be who they are in God's presence. The impact um, that worship has on me at Aaron is that it has drawn me into a place of surrender and I'm growing all the time. It's wonderful. I think worship is so important because normally we listen to one person, usually from the front, but we can't all join in in a sermon, but worship is completely different because we can be united from the youngest to the oldest. What I think is unique to what we do at Aaron, especially when it comes to worship, is how we intently encourage our young people to get involved when it comes to musical worship, to not only use their own skills and their abilities in playing music, but also to deepen their relationship with God. So a big part of my job role is working with the young people and developing them musically and developing their worship team. It's always been a goal of ours to basically get them to a point where they're running their own events and worship nights and we feel like at Aaron Kids event they achieved this. We do the job really well of raising up young people, we've given them a safe platform to, to get started, to try things in a really safe environment. I feel the church has given me confidence by showing me that people don't necessarily judge you for what you do or how you do it. The worship at Aaron Church for me has just been fantastic because it just completely connects me to God. It's just me, God and the music. I'm really excited about what we could build at Aaron with our worship teams um, from what we've seen go before, but also not just at home, but how we can help go out and facilitate worship in other places. In 2020 and beyond, we're just as passionate about helping people connect with our Heavenly Father in worship using the resources that God has given us. This church is about bringing life to everyone. To everyone. To everyone. Everywhere. Everywhere. Every day. Every day.